Hello, I'm Miss Donna, and today I'm going to read you a lovely book called The Seven Chinese Sisters, retold by Kathy Tucker with illustrations by Grace Lin. This is a classic Chinese tale that usually is called The Seven Chinese Brothers, and here we see a new and lovely version of it. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven soup bowls and spoons. Ooh, and here we have some dedications and another lovely illustration. There's their house. And here we have, it says, for my sister Mary, who can talk to dogs, and my sister Barbara, who can talk to horses, by Kathy Tucker. And then Grace Lynn said, to the Pans and their growing family. It is always nice to see special things that people dedicate their work to, special people. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pairs of shoes. Here comes our story. Once upon a time, there were seven Chinese sisters who lived together and took care of each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each sister had shining black hair and sparkling eyes. Each stood straight and tall, except for seventh sister, who was just a baby. Hmm, here we go. But the sisters were very different. First sister could ride a scooter fast as the wind. Second sister knew karate. Kick, chop, hi-ya. Third sister could count to 500 and beyond. Fourth sister could talk to dogs. Fifth sister could catch any ball no matter how fast and how high it was thrown. Sixth sister could cook the most delicious noodle soup in the world. And seventh sister? No one really was sure yet what she could do as she was so little. She had never spoken even one word. Far away across a bridge through a forest and up a mountain lived a terrible dragon. One day he woke up very hungry. He took a big <laughs> sniff, sniff, sniff and smelled something wonderful. It was Sixth Sister's noodle soup. Down the mountain, over the forest, and across a bridge flew the dragon straight to the Seventh Sister's house. The sisters were so busy they didn't see him coming. First Sister was polishing her scooter. Second Sister was practicing for her black belt. Third sister was counting grains of rice. Fourth sister was talking to a stray beagle. Fifth sister was throwing a ball up a mile or so and catching it. Sixth sister had just stepped into the pantry to get some more noodles. And seventh sister was crawling around on the kitchen floor. When the dragon peeked into the kitchen door and saw the plump little seventh sister, he forgot all about the soup. Instead, he snatched the baby. Then he flew back over the bridge, across the mountain, and into his cave. But as soon as the, sav the, the dragon set Seventh Sister down, he was just going to get some salt. She said her first word ever, and it was an excellent word. It was, help! The six sisters had just started to look for Seventh Sister when they heard her call. Right away, they knew her voice. Seven sisters in trouble, cried first sister, leaping on her scooter. We must save her. 
The other sisters hung on behind, pulled by Firth's sister, who was strong as well as fast. The sisters sped across the bridge beyond the deep forest filled with many trees, so many that third sister had to count them by twos. Now seven sisters' loud, cries were louder. The sisters headed up the mountain and soon reached the dragon's cave. She's shouting, help, help, help. They could smell the smoke and hear the most awful roars. Fourth sister listened carefully. Dragons do not talk exactly like dogs, but she could still understand a little. The dragon was worried. There's no use calling for help. You're going to be my supper. And then suddenly, seventh sister shouted her second word ever, which was no. What a good word. If you don't bring her out, sir, you will regret it, called fourth sister in the best dog language that she could manage. The dragon stopped roaring. What was that girl yelling? All he could understand was, bring her out, sir. But no one had ever talked to him before, and he was so curious, he picked up Seven Sister and rushed outside. Second Sister stepped forward. Then, fast as lightning, she leaped into the air, slapped the dragon on the chin, and shouted, Hiya! The dragon was so surprised that, whoop, Seven Sister flew out of his mouth. Back, 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 ran fifth sister, back, 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 and reaching up, 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 she caught seventh sister like a fly ball. When the dragon saw that his dinner was gone, he fell to the ground sobbing, hungry, hungry, he whimpered. And fourth sister understood him perfectly because the word for hungry is exactly the same for dragons as it is for dogs. He's starving, she explained. And now all the sisters could see, quite, could, could see that he was quite skinny and sort of sad. Tomorrow, sixth sister can bring him some soup, first sister said. But we've got to get seventh sister home. She's all worn out and she needs her diaper changed. Sisters, go home, cried baby seventh sister, who was learning to talk very quickly now. First sister put seven sister on her back and hopped on her scooter. The other sisters hung on behind and they whizzed as fast as the wind down the mountain. But when they reached the forest, six first sister has stopped. Now they didn't have seven sisters cries to guide them. How could they find their way through these trees? Don't worry, said third sister. I counted the trees when we came. We must go past 500. And so, when third sister counted 500 trees by twos, the seven sisters came to the bridge. They scooted home and back to their house, where they had a wonderful meal of sixth sister's delicious noodle soup. And what did seven sister do when she grew tall? She became the best storyteller in the world, and she always told this story first. And as it happens, she's reading to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven children. Every family has their talents, and it's so nice when they work together. And they were very compassionate to the dragon once they figured out what was going on with him. How nice. Thank you for listening to this book. I hope you think about things that you do as part of a team and how we can always be kind even to people who are a little bit misunderstood. I hope you take very good care of yourself. Now go do something good.